Hey everybody, welcome back to Alum House Sound. I'm Dave, and today we're gonna to talk about a budget-friendly in-ear monitor setup. Now this is video one of two videos because I'm testing out a new product in the next video, but this video we're gonna talk about the equipment that I use and install a lot right now in churches, in my church, and a bunch of other venues. Uh, it's kind of a budget-friendly way to get some good in-ear monitor systems set up for a band that covers six to eight people. Now, it's not all gonna be wireless, but it is gonna come in under $2,000, uh, specifically right now when I've recorded this video. I believe I've got a cost of around $1,800 to outfit a six-person band with in-ear monitors, some of it wireless, some of it wired. But before we jump into the actual numbers and the, the specifics, I wanna give a quick shout out to Hope Fellowship Church. They had me out on site with people, not just not just you guys across YouTube, but got to do some training on site. And it's great, to, it's just refreshing to be with people, shake some hands, get them hands on on their equipment and and just really guiding and directing them uh, with a, a, that group specifically. So shout out to Hope Fellowship Church for making me an honorary member of their team. But that's it, let's run the intro clip and dive right in. All right, so today we're gonna to talk about monitors and specifically kind of a budget-friendly system that I install in many places. It's kind of my go-to uh, hybrid, if you will, of wireless and wired in-ear systems. So if we start to think about this conversation first, a lot of people just say, I need in-ear monitors. And when you go and you type in in-ear monitor, the first thing that's gonna come up is a Sennheiser wireless in-ear monitor or a Shure wireless in-ear monitor system. And these things are hundreds if not thousands of dollars. So you, you know, you kind of your entry level is that seven to $800 range for maybe a, a Shure PSM 300. Uh, you can quickly get up into the 12 and $1,400 range if you go with some nice Sennheisers. And while they are great quality and they sound amazing, that might be your entire budget. <laughs> so how do, we, how do we find a way to look at wired systems, which we can effectively use with a headphone amplifier, and we can take a signal from our board, we can amplify that signal, we can send it out to a lot of musicians, and it's a good starter path to get you on the way. Now, that being said, I still like to have some wireless options available, and we're gonna talk about how we make that work as well. So let's think about uh, my typical band setup. Uh, we've got drums, we've got bass, we've got a guitarist. Um, a lot of times we'll have a piano player, and that's, that's four people that are not really gonna move at all, right? The drummer isn't gonna go too far. The keyboard player isn't gonna go too far. The electric guitarist, if they get happy and excited, they might jump up and down. They might move a little bit, but they're usually locked in with their, uh, with their pedal boards anyway, so they can't really go but so far. Do they need a wireless system, or can we get by with a wired setup for them? And I am a huge proponent of just being wired. This is kind of my go-to setup, like I said, and I've got it in my church, done it in many other churches and venues as well. Now, the people up front, maybe you've got a, a vocals that are up front that are, are moving around. Maybe they're on wireless mics, and so you just want that freedom of being wireless. And if nothing else, it's more convenient um, to have a wireless in-ear monitor set up for them because it gives them that flexibility. So even for us, uh, we have wired mics that we use. They're on stands, and our vocalists stay pretty stationary but it is somewhat cumbersome to have an extra cable that has to come up and connect into their headphones and maybe stick into their pocket or something. So a wireless option for the upfront people is always a great thing. So let's talk through how we do this. Um, first off, let's talk about how we're connecting on our soundboard. So a lot of times I'm running the X32, which you can see right behind me, and we run mix buses for our monitors. So we have, uh, currently we have six buses set up just for monitors, that's bus one through six, and those are dedicated mono mixes for our in-ear monitors. I know a lot of people like to run stereo, and if you've got the outputs, great. 
Everything that we're gonna talk about could be set up for stereo, except for this little wireless trick that we're gonna talk about, um, but we will cover that as we go forward. So let's take our example, six mono mixes. You say, Dave, how in the world can your band suffer through a mono headphone mix? Mono is so old and antiquated. They learn to deal with it. Uh, I, I actually don't mind it. I'm a professional gigging musician on multiple instruments and leading worship and drums and trumpet and, and all kinds of things. And so that's, that's typically what I get is a mono mix and I'm okay with it. I don't really mind it. You can go the route of investing money into say the P16s for this setup. Maybe you've got a wing and you're, you're running the P16s there, um, you know, or the DP48s even. Like that's kind of next level and that's a lot of budget. So mix buses, we've got six mix buses, they're mono mixes. Now the great part is that people can use their phone, their tablet to control the board if it's networked. They can control the board and they can mix their own monitor. Wow, that's great. So you don't actually need a P16 then for them to have this individual control. And the P16 is limited to 16, uh, 16 channels to mix with. If you run through the M32Q app and uh, you get access to mix all 32 channels then and effects returns all into the headphones. So you can set up a, a reverb. Oh, I'm sorry, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Let's talk about this now. So mono mixes that can be mixed across a phone uh, by the person on stage. That's a really good thing. Now, on stage, for me, I've got uh, an S16 or an S32 now on stage. And so I can take those outputs and I can put them right into this guy. So what we've got here, we've got two inputs. What we can do is run mono input one and mono input two. And what that's gonna give us is two mixes going into this. If this was to support one person, it's left and right. But on these packs, Again, the, uh, the PSM, oh, what is it? It's a P3R is the body pack. And the P3RA is the one that I use. It's a metal pack. Again, for my installs, it's a, it's a much nicer pack. It's a longer lasting pack than these plastic ones. But this is the one that came with this. Now, on the P3R, what you can do a lot of times is you can select left or right. So you can pan it left or right. And then there's a button that you can push mono. And what that's gonna do for you is it's going to use the left input from this, the left signal, and then it will push it into both ears, mono. You can select the right signal and push it into both ears, mono. And what that's gonna do for you is give you two wireless monitor mixes. Now you've gotta buy a second wireless pack, um, but for a, a few hundred dollars, it's cheaper than going with say an $800 system. So you're gonna save a little bit of money. You get those wireless mono mixes and you get two of them out of that setup. All right, so the next thing we need to do is get some signal to the people that are in the back line of our, our drums, our bass, our guitars, our keyboard players, whatever. We're gonna get them a signal that they can use for monitors. Now, Behringer offers the P2, which is a great little tool with a little volume control. You can run an XLR cable right from your snake right over them, you plug it in, and you plug your headphones into it. And that's a great thing if you're gonna be, uh, you know, moving people around on stage. What I tend to do is I've gone for this route, which is the, the Behringer Power Play. This is the HA8000, which stands for Headphone Amp 8000. It sounds like a big fancy unit, but it's got a lot of great features on it. It's an eight channel uh, headphone amplifier. They make a four channel version, but the four channel version is only, I think, $15 cheaper. And it's actually harder to get a hold of. So this gives you the most bang for your buck. Uh, I wanna talk through some of the features on this after we talk about the routing. So we've got four additional monitor outputs or mono bus outputs from our stage box. We can run those right into the back back here. We've got an input and an output for, uh, for each of our eight amplifiers. And so these are actually TRS connections, which is pretty sweet. Because again, if you want to upgrade to a stereo 
monitor for your musician. You've got a TRS connection here which would support that. You could get a cable which is going to be uh, two XLRs to a TRS quarter inch connector and that would give you a stereo input to say uh, amplifier one. You could do the same thing for amplifier two, amplifier so on and so forth to give your people stereo, uh, stereo mixes with this unit. For me, I've only got six buses that I can deal with and or that I've got to offer. So in this case, we go mono. So what I use is uh, this patch cable, which is eight XLRs to eight quarter inch TRS connectors. And that way I've got a quick patch to go from my snake right into this. Again, I'm only actually using four of them into this for my setup, but you've got the ability to do all eight if you needed to. And on this unit, we have some buttons on the front that allow us to select mono. So we've got a mono button right here. Uh, we can do, is that what that says? Yeah, in one and in two, but we've also got a mono button that we can push. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna take the signal and sum it, whatever signal is going into that amplifier, it's gonna sum it into both ears. So we get signal in both ears, not just in one of them. Uh, we, you can see individual volume control and uh, you've got a, an output here on the front as well as an output on the back. This can also, this is also a mainstay in studio use where you've actually got the capability to run two preset mixes, uh, mix one and mix two, and those can be stereo as well as mono. And on the front, that's where you can select mix one or mix two, monitor uh, input one or input two with this little button, and then the mono button still works the same. Pretty cool, you've got main volume controls for that. So it's a highly flexible unit, but how I use it on stage every week is again, I've got individual input going into the back. And out of the back, the other thing that I do is I have the output linked into my analog snake. So I've got a digital snake on the side, but I have three analog snakes around the stage. So my drums and bass, as an example, I've got a 16 channel analog snake and it's got four returns on it that can be XLR or quarter inch TRS, hey? So this actually connects right into that snake, sends the signal to my drummer. So when I'm playing drums like I did the other day, I plug all my drum mics into the snake and then boom, I've got a quarter inch a uh, little extension cable that I plug in, and then my in-ear monitors plug into that. So it's all right on one snake. It's super convenient. Bass player is right next to me, and so they plug into that snake as well for not only their bass signal, but also their monitor signal. My guitarist is on one side of the stage. They plug their guitar mics, and uh, or if they're going direct that Sunday, they plug right into that snake, and they get their monitor mix there. Keyboards on the other side. So we've taken this unit set it in the rack right next to the, our, our stage box. All the connections are pre-done. All of these cables are pre-wired across the stage through analog snakes, and they're right there at your fingertips for people to plug in and connect with. So it's super convenient. Then they can mix from their phone app, and they never have to, to do more than that. They can pull up their phone, they can, uh, they can adjust their mix, all the connections are made. We are using, now listen, we're using a pre-fader mix bus set up for the mix to have individual control, but our output is post-fader. So that on the phone app, if you turn the volume up or down, you can mess with your in-ear volume mix. These volumes are set pretty static, but some people like to have a little bit louder mix, some people like a little softer mix. So there is in that M32Q app, there is a, a volume control if you've got it in the upright. When you turn it sideways like this, that's when you get all the individual faders to build your mix, but upright, you've got a, a master volume control there. All right, so the last thing you need for your musicians is a, an extension cable somewhat like this, which is a, uh, it's a stereo end here, which plugs into your analog snake, and then a stereo output here for your headphones. And all you do is plug this in, kind of wrap it around, stick it in your pocket, and you're ready to go. You play drums, play bass, play guitar, whatever you're playing. Uh, now, this one is an eighth inch to eighth inch. I always now purchase the quarter inch to eighth inch. 
That way these can plug directly into my snake, get that stereo signal, and then plug into my headphones. Um, I am gonna put a link down on the bottom because many analog snakes do not offer a TRS connection as a return back to the snake. And so a lot of times you just get a mono signal, even though it's quarter inch, you get a mono feed back up into the snake. So I always use EWI snakes, and I'll put a link down there in the description of where I get those from. You can purchase those if you'd like. They're great snakes. They've served me well, and I've put a number of those in installations over the years. So that's how I can get my headphone amplifier, stereo, or TRS signal all the way out to that, uh, that analog snake. All right, well, I hope you found this video helpful. I do have links down in the description to all of the products that we've talked about, all of the, uh, the different information in terms of cables or analog snakes or, um, or the, the Behringer unit, the shore units. So I'm gonna put those down there, but the concepts are the same. Let's figure out where we can save some money by going wired and then only put wireless where we really need it. Uh, I like to avoid the P16s. I kind of feel like they're limiting. The DP48s now are amazing, but the P16, while it is convenient, it's somewhat limiting, uh, especially if you're running 25, 30 tracks, 32 tracks into your console, you become limited to kind of squash that down into 16. They're convenient, but if I can mix everything from my phone uh, with without having to go through that box, then that's really a good benefit. So I hope you found this video helpful. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Check below for Amazon links as well because I've got those down there. And we'll catch you guys in the next video. That's it for now. Peace.